just to take you back to something you said earlier on, you said that um, patriotism and uh, national unity are things that have already been looked at and there's no need for any uh, you know, resolutions to continuously implement this. I would like to focus mainly on what's happening amongst the politicians themselves. I mean, we have gotten to see the continuous um, incidences of political, motiv uh, politically motivated uh, violence, especially, um, you know, amongst politicians themselves. When we talk about upholding unity, this needs to be seen and recognized in all, all sectors of our societies today, including politics. I understand you're part of uh, the Zambia Center for Interparty Dialogue, and this is obviously something that you, you, you look into. But how would you describe how politicians are able to uphold unity amongst themselves? You know, the, um, that's, that's a good question, um, Justin. You discuss the issue of violence. And these things, we discuss them at the, at the, 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 the Interparty uh, Dialogue. Um, violence is a crime. It's, it's, it's nothing for it's nothing to do with our our dialogue. I remember that time there was um, we had a, we had a meeting at the uh, CIA Design Center for Interpart Dialogue, and the issue was uh, can we issue a statement against violence? I told them we are not the police. Police do your work. Hmm. Violence is a crime. Enforce the law. Violence will stop. Look, <laughs> these people who do violence they are not invisible. Hmm. If this guy is violent. Pick him up. Where do we take uh, thieves? Those who break the law. There are facilities called the prisons. But you know, government in, government out. The people who do violence, those who threaten violence, they are walking in the streets. It means that the law enforcement is at fault. There are agencies. We have put laws in place, like during elections we have mentioned. Mm. We have elected a commission uh, of Zambia with the laws to implement regarding, <laughs> regarding violence. We have the police. If a party is violent, what do the electoral regulations say? For example, disqualification. Electoral commission has, within their, uh, their laws, um, the power to go and pick, if my party PNUP in a particular violation are violent, you go and disqualify them and you leave those who are decent. We need to implement these things. So you cannot be you know, appealing to, to the morality of the people, the morality of the people. You understand? Yeah? Patriotism, all those fake things. Well, we must be patriotic, but there must be laws because we cannot be ruled by how moral, how patriotic I am. No. We, this country is governed by the laws and the regulations. Our failure, that's what I'm saying, service delivery. This is what the president is supposed mm. to be discussing. Why is the police failing to stop violence? It's, it's, their, it's their role. The IG sits with the, the enabling legislation to deal with a crime, and violence is a crime. So if there is a violence in a violation, it's an indictment on the police. They are weak, they are dysfunctional. I don't, they are receiving money from the treasury, they are getting salaries, they are <laughs> driving land cruisers, they have all the facilities, they are failing to control violence in this country where we have a small population. Go to other countries, go to Uganda, go to Kenya. So what mm. population is there to fail to police um, you know, such a country? We are sparsely populated, yeah? We are not many in this country, because we have a huge country. Uh, and we have enough space. And therefore it's very easy to pluck out the corrupt element or to pluck out the, the, the violent people. So. Our emphasis, Justin, should be about service delivery. To what extent is the police playing their mandate mm. or doing their duty as provided by the law? So institutions are not operating to the satisfaction of Zambian people. That's why you see existence of crimes like violence. Let's uh, get to conclude our conversation. Uh, you, you have brought it up and you wanted to immediately get into it, but this is on democracy and uh, constitutionalism. Now, we know Zambia is a young democracy. There's still a lot to learn as we go uh, you know, further into the years. But when we speak about the period that we're in, Parliament, this is a legislative period where now our lawmakers get to repeal, uh, amend, and as well as uh, make new laws. From your end, you've mentioned that the Access to Information Bill is of importance. What else do you feel yes. needs to be addressed as we continue with this period in, in Parliament? Excellent, Justin. <clears throat> um, when we reverted to multipartism in 1991, um, one of the issues was, uh, okay, the most important was to put this country 
on a new constitutional order because a constitution is what <laughs> is, is, is what is the bedrock of a country. If you have a fourth constitution, you, you will never have sustainable development. Mm. Now, constitution is the foundation. That's why at the founding of a nation, the first thing that you do at independence is to have a constitution. You remember the constitutional talks at independence, we are not even born me and you, you know, mm. even in Zimbabwe, Lancaster talks. It was to create a document for the founding of a nation. So a country is founded on a constitution. If it is fought, you don't make progress because the, the, the rule of play is at fault. Therefore, we have been running with a fault constitution. And, and I agree with a, a, a lawyer, John Sangwa. I think he was on your, radio, on, your, on your TV here when he said that one of the key issues a new government should do is a constitution. Don't tell us the economy. economy. You, cannot re, you cannot reboot, you cannot mend an economy on a fault constitutional arrangement. Because constitutional arrangement has an, a bearing on service delivery. Do you have an effective police? Do you have an effective civil service? Do you have an effective uh, executive? Do you have an effective parliament? Do you have an effective judiciary? So if the defects have to do with the foundation, which is the constitution, do that first. Now, that's why you see this country, we do very well and then we go down. There is something wrong with the foundation. The, the, a strong uh, building is, 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 um, is measured by its, 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 the, the strength of its foundation. The country, this country's uh, progress is faulty. And you will never make good progress as long as the constitutional arrangement is weak. You have a parliament, you have judiciary, you have the executive, but you have a country that is ever becoming a poor. You have a country that has a high unemployment despite the endowment of resources God gave us. You understand? Mm. Because the institutions are not working for the best good of society. The arrangement is weak. You know, when you have a company and then the company is having problems, you go for restructuring. And restructuring starts with the, the rules of how the company is running. Maybe you have too many managers and they are, they are, they are eating the resources of the company. Mm. You, have to, you have to restructure and make it lean. You understand? Mm. Maybe the departments are faulty. Maybe the, the way you place managers in the different uh, sections of those companies, in, in your company, is faulty. And therefore, you need to put better rules to employ people who can deliver value for that company. So is the, so is the country. And therefore, we are due. I hope our, our new government now will not change, should change the people. That the unfinished business on constitutional reviews to make the constitution meet the aspirations of the progress of this country can now be done. So we need to relook at the constitution to do the unfinished business and the subsidiary legislation such as, for example, uh, the enactment of access to information bill, um, the electoral reforms. You have told me we just when you came here that there will be a violation. I said useless. Mm. I mean, we can't have a country that is wasting money as if we don't think. Let, let's put a better way of replacing an MP or a, 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 a council chairman or a mayor who dies. Like now, may he so rest in peace. We lost the mayor for, for Mongo. Why should we go and waste the money there just to replace a mayor? You waste, you go and waste five million? And well, the that, people that, there sit on, on, on That's what the sit, law provides sit, for, sit, sit the, on the floor. electoral code of conduct. And, yes, and so we must, as well speak we must put things. an arrangement where when a, a councillor or a, a, a mayor or council chairman or MP dies, we can find a better way of replacing than wasting money. We have done it on the presidents. We introduced running mate. We had two presidential by-elections. So within a space of four years, we had about four elections. Remember, President Manasa died? After election, after th just about two, three years, two or three years after elections, we had an election, and then we had an election now uh, in, in, in twenty, in, you know, in in in, 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 20, mm. in 2011. Then President Sasa dies, another election. So within a space of of of, of about um, ten years, we had the four national elections. Can you develop like that? Mm. So we have addressed this there, but we have not cascaded downwards so that we have a, a cost effective, uh, a cost neutral way of um, uh, replacing uh, these elected officials. We must do that. Mm. We well, must not take pride in having these useless violations costly when our people cannot wait any longer to have better mm. lives.